Now that we have looked at algebraic equations with both the scale method and the working backwards method, we are going to look at algebraic expressions that use as fractions. Let's have a look at the following two examples. In the first one, we have 6 multiplied by x divided by 5 give me 9. So I can rewrite this to make it a little bit easier for myself as 6x divided by 5 gives me 9. Thinking of our working backwards method, instead of saying divided by 5, when I work backwards, I'm going to say 9 times 5. And hopefully you know that 9 times 5 equals 45. So this means that 6x equals 45. If 6x is equal 45, it means that 45 divided by 6 will give me my final answer. And 6 goes into 45 7 times because it goes into 42. And I have a remainder of 3 sixes, which means that my answer is 7 and a half. To check this, I like to think of it as what number divided by 5 gives me 9. So I'm hoping that you know that that number is 45. So another way of looking at it is by saying 6x's must be 45. And then if you know that 6x's is 45, then x must be 7 and a half. So almost like using the block method like that you did in primary school. Let's have a look at the second method here. The second question, we have x plus 3 and this whole answer divided by 4 must give me 5. So once again, just like in the previous one, if I work backwards instead of dividing by 4, I would now multiply by 4. So 5 multiplied by 4 is 20. So that means that x plus 3 must equal 20. So what number, if I add 3 to it, gives me 20? Well, that's fairly easy. That's 17. And the method that I followed there was to say 20 minus 3. Once again, just working backwards. So instead of adding 3 when I work backwards, I um, subtract 3. Just to go through the block method as well, if I cover this whole top section, the numerator of my fraction up with a block, I can ask myself what divided by 4 is equal to 5. And hopefully you know that that is 20. So I can write 20 in this block like I did with the previous question. And I know that if x plus 3 equals 20, then x equals 17. Let's see if we can make this slightly more difficult. So in these examples, I have a third x. Now, if this looks confusing to you, you can rewrite it exactly like we did with the previous ones and say, I know that a third x is the same as 1x divided by 3 equals 2, which is the same as 1x divided by 3 equals 2. And if I divide by 3 working forwards, it means that I multiply by 3 working backwards. So that gives me 2 multiplied by 3, which is 6. So therefore, x equals 6. Just like in the previous question, I can put a block over there just to check my answer and see, is 6 over 3 equal to 2? Yes, indeed it is. So it's just a nice way of checking your answer and seeing if what you the answer that you got if it actually does make sense within the question. Let's now do the same process for the next one. I'm going to rewrite it as 1x over 3 equals to negative 2 over 3. So I can go through the whole long process of saying multiply by 3 and then finding what the answer is. Or you can notice here that I can actually see the answer already. If 1x over 3 is the same as negative 2 over 3, then it means that x must be negative 2. 
If this process seems a little confusing, let's go through the longer process to get to the answer. So I'm going to write 1x divided by 3 equal negative 2 thirds. So when I work backwards, instead of dividing by 3, I am going to multiply by 3. And you can do this on your calculator, especially if you're not that comfortable with fractions. And negative 2 thirds multiplied by 3, let's just write multiplied by 3 here, is going to give me an answer of negative 2, which is exactly what we saw when we rewrote it here at the top. So we were basically solving this equation through inspection, and that means just by looking at it. If my denominators are the same, it means that my numerators must therefore also be the same. In these next questions, we are making the question slightly longer, but not to worry, we're going to go through the same process of rewriting it as 1x over 2 plus 1 equals 2. And just for like with the previous ones, we're working with the working backwards method. So here we have 2 minus 1, because remember we're working backwards, and instead of plus 1 we do minus 1. And on the left hand side I still have uh, 1x over 2. So now 2 minus 1 gives me an answer of 1. So now looking at the 2, divide by 2 when I work forwards. When I work backwards I'm going to multiply by 2. So that means that 1x equals 2, since 1 times 2 is 2. And now let's go back and substitute this into my formula. If x over here is 2, would this actually make sense? Well, 2 divided by 2 gives me an answer of 1, and 1 plus 1 gives me a value of 2. So what I've done is absolutely correct. Let's now do the same for the next question. Here I have 6x over 4 minus 1 equals 5. When I work back, uh, when I work forwards, I'm minus 1. So when I work backwards, I'm going to add 1. So 5 plus 1. Remember, I'm doing all of this in reverse. So this gives me a value of 6. Which means that 6x divided by 4 uh, equals 6. So here, when I work forwards, I divide by 4. So when I work backwards, I'm going to multiply by 4. So that means 6 multiplied by 4 gives me a value of 6x. And you should know that 6 times 4 is 24. So if 6x is equal to 24, then 1x is 24 divided by 6. You can write this step down or you can leave it out because it's fairly easy. And that gives me a value of 4. Now try and take this back and put it into your formula. If x here has a value of 4, would this make the whole equation true? 6 multiplied by 4 is 24. Divided by 4 is 6. Minus 1 is 5. And your answer is indeed correct. So it's always a good idea to just go and check your final answer to see if your equation is true for the value that you calculated. The following two examples are a little bit more advanced, but if you apply your knowledge of fractions and equations together, you can definitely manage this. So firstly, you need to remember that when I need to add two fractions together, I need to make the denominator the same. So in this case, um, just like with normal fractions, I need to find the common denominator. And the common denominator for 2 and 3 would be 6. It's almost like finding the lowest common multiple of 2 and 3. So if my denominator is 6, it means I need to multiply my first fraction by 3 at the top and the bottom, and my second fraction by 2 at the top and the bottom. And the top and the bottom obviously mean denominator and numerator. So this gives me a value of 3x over 6 and 2x over 6. And the value over here did not change, it's still 12. And now remember that once your denominators are the same, you can basically just add your numerators together. 
So I'm going to add 2x and 3x together, which gives me 5x over 6 equals 12. And now it is a normal equation that we've done before in the previous examples. So what this means is that I need to have a look at the divide by 6 first. And remember, if I divide by 6 when I work forwards, then I multiply by 6 working backwards. So this is going to be 12 multiplied by 6, which is going to be equal to 5x. And 12 multiplied by 6 gives me 72. So if 5x equals 72, then remember if I'm multiplying by 5 working forwards, then I divide by 5 working backwards. So that means that my x value will be 72 divided by 5, which means x equals 14 and 2 fifths. Or you can also say 14,4. Let's look at another similar example to this one. Here I need to find the lowest common multiple of 5 and 8. Um, so once again, I'm looking for the common denominator here, which would be 40. Meaning that I multiply my first fraction by 8. And I multiply my second fraction by 5. Remember you need to multiply the numerator and the denominator in each case. And this will give me a value of 30. 2m over 40 plus 15m over 40 and together that is 47. Now once again if my denominators are the same I can just add my numerators together. So 32 plus 15 gives me 47m over 40. And remember, if I divide by 40 when I work forwards, then I multiply by 40 when I work backwards. So therefore, I multiply by 40. So 47m gives me 47 multiplied by 40, which is 1880, 47m. And remember that if I work forwards and I multiply m by 47, then when I work backwards, I divide by 47. And no surprise that this will give me an answer of m equals 40. I say that since over here I had 47 times 40. So... In other words, here if I say 1880 divided by 47, I will get 40 again. So it was actually, you were able to see the answer a little bit earlier. And that's more advanced equations with fractions.